Faux Snug Piercings. Pros, cons, advantages, disadvantages. Coming up next on Pros and Cons by A Piercer, episode number 67. So stick around. For those that are new to the channel, my name is Dave O. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking to you with a level of expertise as someone who's been piercing in the industry for well over 25, well, 26 years this month. Before we get into this any further, I should probably explain what a faux snug piercing is. For those who are not familiar with what a snug piercing is, a snug piercing is through generally this ridge, this kind of rounded heel that is on the outside of your ear. A snug, faux snug, is two separate piercings instead of one that appear to be like a snug piercing. Usually one done this way and one done kind of like a high conch. This piercing is fairly new. However, it has its advantages and disadvantages over a snug piercing, and we're gonna get into that, but they tend to have a much better healing rate and uh, success rate than snug piercings do, which are, tend to be very pragmatic. So let's get into the pros, the cons, the things, the advantages of this thing. I'm gonna give you five of those, starting with number one. This is gonna be less likely to have issues uh, compared to a snug piercing. The reason why snug piercings tend to have a lot of issues is the location, the amount of contact it gets, the fact that the area is very flexible. And when you put one piece of jewelry in there that's very rigid and constrictive, it kind of forces it to stay in that position. When you do this in two separate piercings, you're given a lot more flexibility as far as movement one way or another if the ear gets bumped or squeezed. Um, also, it allows uh, it to... Uh, not have to be in that solid state. So it's less prone to uh, feeling like the body reacting to it like it would abuse and causing bumps and other issues. Number two, it looks just like a snug if it's done correctly. Um, there's very little difference if the angle's done correctly, it'll look like one solid piercing if it's lined up correctly and heals correctly. Um, it's kind of a better option from that standpoint. Uh, it can look just like what you want, but it isn't. Number three, there is a large variety of ends. Since this is done usually traditionally with labre studs or uh, barbells, you have a large variety of different types of jewelry ends to choose from, from very simple to very, very complex and very ornate. Number four, this could fit into your anatomy and look perfectly beautiful as if it was meant to be there. Uh, one of the restrictions with snugs is the depth and positioning and angle when you do it in this method where it's two separate piercings, you can adjust that so it fits more into your anatomy where it's not you're trying to fit the jewelry or fit the anatomy to fit the jewelry. It's more we can fit the piercing to fit your anatomy. Number five, I kind of touched on this earlier, but because this area is very flexible, your ear is very flexible and moves a lot, this does better because you don't have this piece of jewelry trying to force it into place when you have these pieces of cartilage that are moving all over the place. Instead, the piercing will move as it flexes and moves. So you're gonna have less abuse, less issues, and your body's gonna treat it, uh, if trauma happens in the area, it's not gonna react the same way. Now let's move on to the cons. Number one, this is two piercings, meaning that you have to heal two piercings. Both of them can have issues, just like conscious have issues in upper ear cartilage or helix piercings have issues because you're doing kind of a combination of both of them, one may heal out fine and the other one not so fine. Number two, the jewelry needs to be longer than needed. The reason why we do it with jewelry that is longer than needed is mainly inflammation and swelling. Because this piercing, both of these piercings are gonna swell a little bit, that jewelry's gonna have to be a lot longer than what you're gonna need in the long run, and you're probably going to have to downsize once the piercing heals to reduce the amount of profile that piercing has um, to reduce the likelihood of catching on things and et cetera. Number three, your anatomy may not be suited for this particular set of piercings. The reality is with everybody, is that your ear is shaped vastly different from person to person 
and differ from side to side. If you don't have the proper anatomy to fit these two piercings into the area comfortably, where it's not gonna cause issues, then the piercing can't be done. There also has to be enough supportive tissue there to uh, support the jewelry so that it doesn't reject or migrate or cause other issues like tearing. Number four, this area has a lot of contact with stuff. If you think about it, it's the outside of your ear. It comes in contact with bedding. It comes in contact with uh, phones, headphones, helmets, hats, etc. hair. It's really one of those piercings or set of piercings that you really have to isolate and keep things away from. Which moves us on to number five. You can't sleep on this piercing. You wanna sleep on your other side or figure out a way to elevate it off the bed. Um, you also want to isolate it and reduce any contact the piercings have with anything. And I mean anything. We're concerned with contact of two things. The first thing being is that the piercing becomes contaminated, which could cause serious issues, including infection. The other reason is the abuse and trauma and banging, and et cetera, that happens when you have a piercing that is in contact and stuff all the time. It will start causing issues, and then you're going to have problems. Now let's move on to what I would say to you if you came in and asked for this particular piercing, my basic consultation. First thing I'm gonna tell you is average healing time can range anywhere from, anywhere from 12 to 16 weeks, sometimes longer. It really depends on how healthy you are and how well you heal piercings. During which time, I'm gonna suggest doing compresses for 10 minutes twice daily using a sterile saline solution such as Nelmed. Um, either piercing wash or wound wash. Clean the area with an antimicrobial or germicidal soap only if you feel like you've contaminated the area. Cross-contamination prevention, comments and stuff. Wash your hands before you handle it. No oral contact, no exchange of bodily fluids. Keeping your environment clean, clothing, bedding, towels. Not submerging the piercing in bodies of water you can't control the quality of, which is everything but your own clean bathtub. Also keep pets away from it, especially small pets that like to sleep by your face. Avoid contact with unclean objects. Culprits with this would be things like telephones, headphones, earphones, uh, earbuds, uh, glasses, hair, etc., helmets, hats, anything that covers it. You want to avoid contact until it's completely healed. Limit contact when sleeping. Do not sleep on the piercing. Make sure you sleep on the other side or your back, as I mentioned earlier. The last thing I'm going to tell you is because these piercings are on that bleeding edge of kind of experimental and you're dealing with two different types of piercings, you may see a, a different healing time during uh, as far as one will heal faster than the other one. Also, one may be more probatic than the other one, and there's always a possibility of slight migration one way or another with this particular set of piercings. So that would really be something that you do need to consider before getting it done, of course, along with all the cons I already mentioned. I hope that helped to answer any questions you may have about a faux snug piercing. Uh, if you found it informative or you have something to add, please leave a comment. We love it when you comment, uh, ask questions. If you have something to add or you've had an experience with these particular piercings, we would love to hear from you. I generally answer comments when I have a chance, even those that are off topic. If you liked the video and found it informative, give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you like it because we like it when you like it. Hit that subscription if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell so that you're notified every single time we post something. We have various different types of merch, and we enjoy it when you buy that and show your pride for body piercing, uh, your support of the channel, and et cetera. Plus, you know, they're cool looking. We have t-shirts, uh, leggings, uh, stickers, and uh, tote bags to tote all that stuff you bought from us here to there. But check out it. Uh, links are in the description. Also, there's one of those merch shelves down below. Till next time, here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. Stay inside. Stay clean. Stay healthy. And wash your hands. A lot.